Aluxio is um, open source technology for the cloud. They help their organizations to connect with compute and storage in the cloud. They've been around for seven years, and they're an AWS partner. And up uh, we have um, the folks that will introduce themselves to you now. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Good morning. So my name is Bean. To me, AWS is a lot about public cloud and open source. And today, I'm going to talk about one open source technology we're building called Aluxio. And the specific topic we're choosing here is about how, use, how to use the open source technology like Aluxio to eliminate unnecessary data copies, repeated data copies, across different data silos, different uh, network regions. So today, it's going to be me and Shouwei, my colleague. I'm the founding engineer and the VP of open source in Aluxio. I'm also the PMC co-chair, and I'm also working in other open source technology, like, for example, Presto, my email. I'm, uh, previously, I got my PhD in computer science in Carnegie Mellon. So, Shouwei, how about introduce yourself? Hi. My name is Shouwei. I'm working at Alashu, and I'm the core maintainer of the Alashu, and also the product of the open source community. Uh, before joining Alashu, I got my PhD degree in the ECA department of Rogers University. Okay, so a little bit about what the open source technology we're building. It's originally a research project incubated from UC Berkeley AMP lab in 2014. At that time, uh, it was known as a different name called Taikyan. And a lot of people know that because it was a sister project for Apache Spark and helping managing the distributed off heap storage for Spark. Since then, we built this uh, general framework, not just working with the Spark, but also with other data analytics and AI and ML workloads, including, for example, Presto, Trino, uh, Impala, Hive, and also like a PyTorch or TensorFlow, this type of different tools. So far, we have more than 1,200 GitHub contributors, and it's still growing. And the Slack, we have more than 9,000 Slack members. Uh, was listed by some previous some survey at the most 10 critical Java-based open source projects on GitHub. And if you have any questions, I am sure we are always on our Slack. Okay, so this is the motivating slide, like why I'm even giving this talk today. Uh, essentially, I want to share you like uh, some observations and the driver uh, or the driving reasons for these different things we are seeing the complexity is growing to build a data platform, even with cloud today. Well, one of the reasons is we are seeing that data is generated more and more daily, day by day. All these great companies you see in the world, they are already data-driven. A lot more enterprises, they are trying to be more data-driven. That means they need more data. However, due to legacy reasons, due to organizational reasons, you can see there are different data silos, different departments, or due to acquisition and merge. So that means a lot of engineers, engineering bandwidth or management is spent on making data copies from one place to another. Actually, in the previous talk, uh, Adrian was showing one thing, like manually copy S3 data, get one extra, like uh, many years ago, for certain, like, uh, um, Zoom availability, right? So a lot of this requires actual efforts to make the data available. Well, next is, as more and more products are driven by the intelligence or the insights from derived from data, that means more different teams, especially more different products or tools, are using the same data, same set of data. And they tend to be using different APIs or interfaces to access data. Like, for example, 10 years ago, uh, most the standard way to access big data is just HDFS, if you know, like all oh, the Hadoop ecosystem is built on top of HDFS interface to get data. But today, I'm saying like a HDFS is fading away and S3 is becoming the more, it's becoming new HDFS interface. Like everyone is now supporting how to use the S3 API or protocol to access data. And also we have seen, like for example, the uh, machine learning all these machine learning tools, they still prefer to use the, the more like a Postgres compatible way to get your data. So that means more tools you introduce to your data platform, you need more different ways to abstract, you need more different abstraction to expose the same data to different applications. And also we have seen because the innovation, like the, the industry is progressing. So due to the innovation for compute, for storage, we have been seeing the 
every three to eight years, there will be new generation, new technology trends uh, in both hardware and software to build this uh, compute and storage. And the cloud providers are actively using them. And that means for a lot of enterprise organizations, you see a hybrid mode for using different ways to uh, store data or compute or de deriving inside processing data. So that means you have to, uh, uh, we have seen a lot of enterprises are dealing with this, um, the hybrid of on-premise computation or data and in-cloud or hybrid or multi-cloud environment. So you have to deal with this complex data uh, environment. So all in all, when I'm talking to users like uh, in this space, especially in this, uh, in this space, they're, they're telling me, hey, all these cloud, they're great. They provide us a lot of com com uh, convenience and the flexibility. However, it makes my choice perhaps a little bit harder. I need to make sure my technology or my new data architect will, my new architect, architect will need to work with this all different new choices. So I want to show a, a common evolution we see, starting from the, on your side, this left bottom side. It's on-premise. It's perhaps 10 years ago, you see this a lot. It's on-premise Hadoop data warehouse. You run Hive, you run MapReduce, you run, run Spark on top of your HDFS data there. And then gradually people are introducing new workloads. They are running PyTorch or TensorFlow on your data and likely, or sometimes this is going to be in a different data warehouse, in a data center, in different regions. And now we're replicating the resource. You can replicate the resource in AWS or in some other cloud providers and see more and more different choices. And this makes the total complexity even higher and higher because uh, especially for, we see like for the big enterprise, this becomes a norm. You have to deal with, you have to keep the choices open. You have to deal with this complexity to dealing with different environments. Okay, so given all the data silos, it's very general, like we see more and more a constantly request, like I want a simplicity here. I want to get back to my, sim uh, get back simplicity, including I want to get a common APIs to access data. I want to get a common and shared user, uh, consistent user experience to get data. And also how can I, because different, uh, the, the, the data can be different silos and different teams, uh, all the um, authentication, all this data movement. How can I get my data assessment easy and also accelerate? I don't want to handle all the data migration. It's very uh, dirty and it's also uh, human uh, error prone for humans. Uh, last, the agility, you, you, like uh, this environment is getting more compli complicated. So we want to get the different regions the similar experience for different users. A lot of users talking to them, hey, I have different environments to run in my on-premise data warehouse and on AWS, both East and West. And perhaps in Azure or some other public cloud providers, how can you provide me the same experience when I'm writing my application code and writing my, uh, for example, all this deployment, all this uh, uh, application management code, right? So one be the environment agnostic. And luckily you, you may know like uh, right now with the dockerized, uh, with containerization technology, with Kubernetes technology, it gives you a lot of flexibility to get this computation or this uh, workload abstraction. And what we're doing here is to also do this, but for the data layer. So essentially, we're adding a new layer. We're not building something complementary to the computer or storage, but we're adding a new layer. We call this in the middle of the analytics and AI computes and the storage in different compute or different cloud providers. And this new layer helps to provide abstraction, provides this consistent API or different API sets and the consistent performance for different applications. And this is for, I just, I just want to be more precise here. This is for analytics big data analytics workloads and machine learning AI, especially training workloads, not for uh, like a traditional or IT workloads or uh, database workloads, that, that's, that is not our space. So with this abstraction layer, what we can do is we are creating this new, we call this, you can think, uh, if, you are, if you get your computer science knowledge, this is more like building a logical file system. And this logical file system is, provide, is uh, exposed to the users so they can program. Oh, I'm just accessing this logical file path rather than going to S3 or going to uh, GCP or going to my HDFS. But we will do this translation, do this naming translation for you, but also 
Similarly, like acting as like maybe the VFS uh, buffer caching for you to help you to provide consistent performance rather than waiting for my data repeatedly fetched from my own HDFS. So uh, this technology has been used for many different uh, for many different industries, including technology or public cloud, or even like in general, like for the e-commerce. Um, and we see in different sectors and for different scale for companies. And we are also working closely with AWS. If you see this, uh, it's called AWS Big Data Data Lake and Analytics for modern data architecture. We're listed as one of the partners there. Okay, so. I want to actually show you more uh, case studies, how people are using, uh, like what problems people are seeing and how people are using this open source to help, help them. Yeah, thank you, Bing, for giving the very general introduction of the Alasho, what we are doing. And uh, in following session, I will go through the specific use cases with the Expedia group uh, in the S3 uh, and also on the EC2. Uh, Expedia is a very large of group with a uh, lot of uh, sub uh, companies and they acquired and uh, all this kind of thing. Uh, that makes that uh, group is uh, pretty large and make a lot of data cycle problem. Because for this, all these their sub company actually they run independently, which means uh, when they already have the, uh, acquired this company, they cannot move the data from, for example, from the US the West 2 to the US the East 1 because uh, this all company uh, have to keep all their legacy data, which makes they have a lot of data siloed problem in their uh, data lake. And the second problem is like, uh, because of the, all, all this kind of legacy data, when they want to do all central like, data analytic, they have to move the data from the, uh, the satellite data lake to the main data lake, which means uh, it's uh, sim like make their uh, data lake very complex. The third one is like, uh, because actually before the Alasho, they don't have any solution to do all this kind of uh, uh, without replication uh, work. So make their introduce a lot of maintenance effort to maintain this uh, data pipeline. And afterward, I will give some uh, go through what it's, uh, they are using before they using the Alasho and uh, what they achieve with the Alasho. Um, before they using Alasho, they use uh, one solution called uh, data replication. This is very common in past uh, like uh, tens of years. And uh, when they want to do the data analytics in their main data lake, uh, they have to copy all this kind of data from the satellite uh, data lake. For example, for the left upper, it's US West 1. Uh, for example, it belongs to the uh, sub-company called Hotel.com. And uh, if they want to do the data analytics with Expedia, other uh, sub company, they have to copy the hotel.com data from the US the West 1 to the US East 2 to do, 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 do all this kind of data analytics, which make there a lot of trouble uh, in their environment. First of all, it makes it a very poor, poor performance, which means like when you want to copy the data, it uh, happens like several hours, even uh, days before, which makes your data pipeline have to wait for several hours or even like one day to make the data ready in the main data region to do the data analytics, which is uh, make the, you mean, I mean you will lose a lot of money because you cannot uh, pretty allergy to the agile to the, your customer to provide a better recommendation, which is uh, uh, make them to think, double think about this kind of uh, technology. The second one is uh, when you want to do the data replication, which means you have to have very good insight of your table uh, schema. Uh, for example, you want to only analyze the uh, past one day of the data, but your table contains of five years of the data. You still want to copy the whole table from the uh, US West 1 to the US the East, East 1, which means a lot of uh, uh, S3 increase cost in this uh, geo distribute uh, data copy. Uh, this is uh, how they implement the data replication uh, in like several years ago. Uh, they use one system called the uh, circle string to do all this uh, data replication for different uh, business line. When you add one uh, data analytic requirement, you will build one more task in this uh, cycle string to move the data. 
But I mean, because after there are so many problems with the data replication, it enforces them to think, double think about their architecture, how we can achieve a better performance and better consistent and uh, to meet their business requirements. Uh, after the investigation, like a tenth of the uh, open source technology, they contact with us and uh, they adopt the, our solution uh, to build their unified uh, data lake uh, for the Expedia group. Uh, different from the data replication, Alasio don't use, uh, uh, don't move the data like uh, periodically, or I mean, it will no, not like, uh, you don't need to copy the data daily uh, to do all this kind of maintenance. The only thing you need to do is like, we have a, a unified namespace as your main data lake uh, region, and you mount all this kind of uh, across region uh, data packet into this Alasio. Uh, namespace to serve your application. You can serve the application like Hive, Spark, Trino, Databricks, Runtime, uh, almost uh, every system compatible with the HDFS interface and the S3 interface. And uh, other than that, uh, as we mentioned before, uh, they have to do the data uh, replication based on their table schema, and which cause a lot of problem there. And uh, here, actually, the granularity will be much lower. Uh, for example, if you only want to access a portion of the data, for example, past days, past of weeks, actually we were aware of it and only catch this kind of data from the uh, satellite the data lake to your main data lake instead of copy the whole uh, table data from the across the regions. And here is the diagram of how they're using uh, this kind of uh, tool to meet their requirements. Uh, first of all, for example, you have the uh, three di uh, different, uh, uh, two different uh, data lake at the US, there is the one with the data lake A and data lake B uh, for the different uh, uh, companies' component. And you also have the two different data lake at the US West 2 for your, like, for, for example, for the hotels.com. And when you want to do the data analytics at the US the East 1, uh, you can just uh, move the data, uh, capturing the data from the US the West 2 to the Alasio system here, uh, instead of uh, copy the whole data to the S3. And uh, in order to achieve this uh, uh, translation, because Alasio is uh, like uh, orchestration of the VFS, it's not at the table level, and Expedia also implement one system called uh, Wiggle to do all this kind of thing. Uh, Wiggle will all do the indirect uh, request uh, uh, from the application Hive, Spark, Trino, and Databricks, when they query the data, uh, if this data is removed, actually it will go through Alasio system to do all this kind of query. But if this data is like already local in the US the East one, for example, it will directly contact with S3 to get the data. This is a very, uh, like a very general uh, use cases uh, uh, for you running the Alasio in the uh, AWS. And I will go in a little bit deeper into what is our architecture, architecture look like. Uh, actually, we have three different uh, main components. Uh, the first one is like we have the Alasio master here. It's mainly responsible for the, all this uh, data consistent guarantee. It will do the metadata sync across the UFS. For example, here it's S3 uh, with our namespace. And we also have Alasio Worker here uh, to provide the data service to all this application. And it's Alasio client will query all this kind of data from the Alasio Worker and also query the metadata from the master. Underneath the Alasio Worker, it will also get the data and the periodical, talk to the object store here like S3 from the different region and make sure your data is up to date. Um, and for the worker component, actually, in order to maximize the data locality with the scale out worker, actually, you know, like in cloud, uh, we separate the cloud and storage. Most of the time, you always like query data from the remote storage, which hurt your performance. And for the Alasio, actually, we'll, we, we can co-locate it with all these kind of uh, compute workers, and uh, you can just uh, fetch your data from the local de device, which means you will get very consistent performance compared to the cloud storage. And uh, for the metadata part, uh, you don't need to worry about, uh, like, uh, for example, nowadays you have to do, for example, Spark 
want to query a data from US, the East 1 and US West 2. You have to do a lot of configuration. You have to do a lot of maintenance to do all this kind of thing. But with Alasho, you just mount all this kind of bucket into Alasho namespace, and uh, we unified all this uh, kind of path to your application. Say so you mean when you want to query the data, you only need to uh, acquire the schema with Alasho. Uh, at the beginning, and you can you don't worry about uh, like uh, separate uh, high meta store, separate group meta store, all this kind of thing. And uh, for the deployment part, actually we ha we provide uh, two different uh, uh, architecture here. The first one is optimized for the performance. That means uh, you have the uh, Alasho worker and uh, your Spark water worker or Presto worker at the same node and uh, optimize the local uh, performance to your application even in the cloud. And the second part is the uh, maximum to share the data. For example, your Spark, data, uh, Spark application and the Presto application share the same set of the table, uh, table data set. You can share all this kind of data uh, with the same uh, Alasho region to ac access the remote region, which means it will overcome your data fetch store from the remote region, uh, reduce the latency to the millisecond in, 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 uh, compared to the tens of milliseconds. And uh, this is uh, our most of uh, important uh, uh, functionality called uh, unified namespace. With this functionality, uh, it's really, really like the Linux mount. Uh, you can do uh, with your local machine. You just uh, simply mount your S3 bucket uh, into any path in the Alasho. Then you can consume the data from this path instead of uh, uh, fetch all the data from the uh, data silo storage. And uh, this is all we have. And uh, if you're interested in Alasho, please visit our, our website and join our Slack. And we also promote our events on the Twitter and the LinkedIn. And, uh, thank you. Yeah. We Any can maybe questions? take one or two questions from the audience. Oh, uh, so we have the open source. So this is the open source. We're talking about open source technology. And like the use case we show here today, uh, Expedia, they are using, they're running our community edition. So there's uh, just totally free. You can just download and, and compile. You don't need to even compile. We have Docker image. But we also have enterprise edition with more add-on for security, for uh, support, uh, this type of uh, things. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah, thanks.